So today I'm going to talk about sore mouth and goats. So basically it's a very persistent, very contagious viral disease that mostly affects sheep and goats. It's caused by a virus that's in the pox family and it is zoonotic. So it's very contagious and it can be spread to humans. And it's really important to talk about because sore mouth sort of affects I think it was like 50% of sheep and goat herds. So it's something that's seen a lot. It's something I've seen a lot back home. So it's not rare by any means. Um, it's characterized by thick and scabby sores on the lips and gums, like in this picture here. But you can have lesions all over the body, in the ears, uh, on the inner thigh, mainly in places where there would be very little hair and a lot of skin exposed is where you will see those sores pop up. Um, and it can cause secondary infection. So an example of that would be if you had a kid that had it and then it nursed, uh, the doe could get it on its teeth and then she's probably not gonna let that kid nurse anymore because it's really painful. And then she can get mastitis and then the kid can starve to death. So it's really important to monitor and make sure that all of your animals are still eating and still functioning. Um, and the sores themselves can contain secondary bacteria, so we'll talk about that a little bit. But basically, diagnosis is just visually from all of these pictures. You're going to see the sores. Um, this is probably a really severe case, but typically you'll see it just kind of start like this and um, this is pretty much how they'll diagnose it. So it's really important to take caution when you're treating this because humans can get it really easily. So since it's viral, there's really not a whole lot that can be done about it. It just has to run its course. The only time we're gonna treat is if those secondary infections pop up. So it'll last about one to four weeks. But since it's in the pox family, if you know, like chicken pox and humans, you usually don't get it more than once, which is a positive. Um, and again, just making sure that they're eating and drinking so that they don't have any secondary issues because of the virus. Um, but you can use repellents and larvicides if you sort of have um, more open woundage, kind of like in that picture. And if those were to sort of split open more, you might use a larvicide and repellent. Um, it's really important to isolate these animals and it's important to sort of monitor what's coming into your farm and leaving your farm um, because it'll spread like from doe to doe, kid to kid, kid to doe. It'll go all over the place. You can use ointments on the sores to soften them um, since it is painful so that hopefully maybe they can open their mouth a little bit better and get more food or you can do some drying medications to sort of help it um, clear up faster. And um, you can also sort of soften their food to make it more palatable and easier to consume. Um, and then if it's on an udder, there's some different ointments and stuff you can use to sort of control bacteria in that area. And then if it is a milking herd, make sure you're taking care of that animal last so you don't spread it. So it's important when you're dealing with something like this that you don't have animals that are sort of uh, knocking each other around or nails in your barn that can cut your animals and that sort of thing because the virus enters through cuts and abrasions. So it's important to look for that and make sure you're taking all the precautions <coughs> to prevent those things from occurring. But it'll typically happen around the mouth because when they're eating hay and that sort of thing, they can get tiny cuts on their mouths all the time and that's not something you can really prevent. So that's why you see it on the lips a lot. So there is a vaccine for it uh, and it's really rare because it's a live vaccine and basically it's ground up scabs and you have to introduce it into your herd. So what you basically do is prick your goat in like the inside of their ear, the inside of their thigh, and then put the vaccine on it 
and wait for them to get sore mouth. That's what you do. And it's not really used because there's no passive immunity that occurs. Um, so you have to do kids when they're one month old and then again and that sort of thing. And it's if people don't have an issue with it, there's no point for them to vaccinate and introduce it into their herd. And then a lot of people that do vaccinate will get it themselves while they're vaccinating. So it's not the smartest form of prevention. Um, but what you basically do is any kind of supportive care that we would do for viruses in ourselves is what you would do in this case. Um, but it's important to know that once it's on your property, it doesn't leave your property. You can do things like bleaching, removing topsoil, burning things, but it's, it's very hard to get rid of. So if you can move them to a different area for a period of time, that would be a good thing, but when it's there, it's there for the most part. But it can come into your farm on fencing, equipment, bedding, so it's important to know where you're sourcing things and then quarantining new animals because they can be carriers and not show signs either. So some other diseases that are similar to sore mouth would be foot and mouth. You can kind of see the sores, but these are internal instead of external. And then on other parts of the body like the hooves, um, pox, it's similar, but you're gonna have those spots on the skin all over the body, which you don't see in sore mouth, and then blue tongue. And that's it. So you're ready for question? Yeah. That's an interesting way to vaccinate with the Lyme yeah. vaccine. You know, that's very <laughs> uncommon, but sometimes that happens by accident. Yeah. I don't know if you ever run into that, but there'll be like a modified live virus, supposedly, but at the company, they didn't modify it right. And mm -hmm. when you inject it into your animal, it gives the animal disease kind of like this. Did you use the O word, another name for this? Was it ORF? ORF? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. ORF is what I, you know, I call it. And uh, again, if you work in a laboratory situation, you know, when I first started Purdue, we did stuff with sheep in Lily Hall, you know, surgeries and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we had a case of ORF. I think we all got ORF, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And we know it was just going to heal and go on from there. So, yeah. Anyway, any questions, comments about that? Yeah, very interesting. Live virus. Once you have it, there's no, no getting rid of it, basically. Okay. Let's give her a soft round of applause. Okay.